Welcome back, everybody. It's a little bit of deja vu here, but we are finally ready to go for this TVZ on Interloper. We were just talking about uh, both of these players' performances and uh, special maybe having an off day today. Maybe Zanster Zerg meta that's recently changed is going to be able to topple him over. Who knows? But I would say that most people say special takes us 2-0. I, I am one of those people that agrees with you there, Zobby Grub, uh, and agrees with the other, most people that would predict that. I think that special is, uh, is set up on paper to have a really incredible performance here in Montreal. But that DNS series does leave some question marks over my mind. But let's forget that. Let's reduce the players in the bottom right here from Psystorm Gaming. This is Zangster! And in the top left, recently picked up by a brand new Italian team. This is Special! Prophecy Esports, I believe, is the name of that team. Yes, yeah. Not much about it, but... Yeah, new coming to the scene. New uh, teams picking up new players in StarCraft 2, which I like to see. Yeah, yeah. Zanster, um, not too new to his team anymore, I suppose. But still, a lot of people forget that he is on Psy Storm Gaming. So he's been there for a couple months now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll see uh, Special enjoys his time with his team. If they actually... I guess supports his needs. Of course, he's been in Korea for a long time. I wonder if they think that's a really good place to be. I certainly think that it is. Haven't gone there many it's, times. Yeah, not a bloody bad place for practice either. The ladder's quite good. Gets your TVT at really, really top notch when you're high up in that GM ladder, which Special absolutely is. Oh, yeah. A lot of great Zergs to practice against as well. So, uh, and you know, <laughs> when, you're, when you're a European track practicing in Europe, there's not a ton of Terran practice. There are a lot of good Terrans, but still, like, you know, not like Korea ladder where there is. Like yeah. a plethora, you're playing against your Marus, your innovations, your TYs, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would actually say, like, of course, there are fantastic Zergs in Korea. There's no denying that. Yeah, you that broke actually might have been uh, the least amount of practice he would have gotten, of course, all the Terrans and the ladder and the amazing Protosses as well. But I, I totally agree with your point about Zancer versus Terran. Like, that one is more of a rarity. If ever seen ZVZ with this guy? That's where he's, oh, yeah. he's going to be at, yeah, man. But yeah, everyone's got a pretty VZ, pretty good VZ in uh, in EU. If you want to yes. get high up that ladder, so we saw a special, by the way, go for a gas burst here and powering into factory as quickly as possible off that expansion. With Zanster going mm -hmm. for a pretty regular opening as well with the hatchery first. Now, how do you feel about TVZ on this map? Let me grab. On Interloper, I think it's actually quite the weird map. People have said it looks a lot like Terraform, which I absolutely agree with. But it can be a very cruel map for Zerg players, in my opinion. You have these chokes. Uh, of course, it's, it's you know, <laughs> I want to say it's literally Terraform, but wait a second, <laughs> it's Interloper. But you can Terraform the map to your needs, break down some of these rocks, you know, make chokes that aren't there, make chokes wider. Like, that certainly is true. The amount, like, if they actually get into that third base, man, like, that, that's they siege up their tanks. It is so hard to deal with. You know, you try and counterattack, and they're set up against that, too. Then what are you going to do as a Zerg? It's tough. Yeah, there are some uh, tough options here. Plenty of choke points, but can be, can be good for, uh, for a Terran player. It's special, obviously, obviously, sometimes often mechs in TV. Well, not often, but he does mech in TVZ on maps like Abyssal Reef. Maps that do have funky terrain and, and abusable spots and choke points. Yeah. But we'll see if that happens again here. He is opening with just a straight-up Widowmine and Marine opening. So looking like probably Widowmine drop to start things off with. Mm -hmm. um, Zanster still just droning up, getting that third hatchery. Everything looking pretty standard here, not over-making lings or anything like that. Yeah. Pretty regular play. I like that you brought up Abyssal Reef, too, because that's kind of where, in my mind, this has to be played. The Abyssal Reef is such a fantastic map because it's macro, it's large, but not, like, you know, super, super big. And then it has all these different ways of playing. Yeah, there's chokes, but there's also so many avenues of attack. The Zerg player can get those counterattacks or those wraparounds, and it's actually very effective sometimes. But Interloop is just a smaller map, so I feel like it's a lot harder to do that. And the Terran player can even expect it a little bit easier as well. Mm. But as you said, Wood of Mind Drop also being uh, produced Hellions right now, so a bit wow. of a double whammy, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, yeah, could, be could do. Though. I mean, it's looking like he wants to load up these Marines, the Widow Mine in the first meta back, and then maybe just take map control on the ground via Hellions. is pretty Ooh, common. Okay, oh, well, never mind. Armory. We got yeah, an Armory yeah. drop there, so that's going to change things up a bit. It's interesting that he added the Widow Mine drop first, though, so this yeah. might be a bit of a surprise for Zancer, who I don't believe has gotten a scout at all yet. He does not see this meta pack that is going to go right through the middle of the map. Where is that going to go? It could just go right to the third base, try and kill maybe a couple of the queens that are there, too. Yeah, it could do. There, there is a bit of a cliff. I mean, Zanster just sees this with the Overlord, the creature is right there. There is a sort of a, a spot where you can pop up and down between the third and the main base, but it looks like uh, Special is just going to take the ground path here with that medevac and, and, and start pressing that third. Yeah. Getting a Liberator really quickly as well. This looks like a really a relatively aggressive opening here from Special. Uh -huh. 
very easily taken care of that widow mine i mean if he pulls if he drags those queens forward and zancer like underestimates like well, what are you doing with widow mine dropping in the front face then that's where these hellbats could have really been a problem but he just detonated the widow mine already so that shouldn't be as mm. difficult all of his queens on the front lines with creep spread he focus fires that medevac and shouldn't be like too terrible to take care of with more lings on the way he does have a lot of links on the way, but as it stands, not enough units from Zanster at the moment to, to attack mm -hmm. everything head on. But there is a lot of queens here, and uh, Special's being very, very careful. He's pulling back to the edge of the creep. He's got that widow mine, and he's going to go for some harassment at the natural by the looks of things with Liberator at the same time. Yeah, now that the widow mine is charging, and that's a little bit scary. He's going to let a queen tank it, which absolutely can, and Chance Fuse will go down as well. More Hellions are coming in, and this is actually getting quite scary. You might have thought that the threat was over, but it's not. No, absolutely not. Reinforcements here, and they turn into Hellbats along with the Marines to help out. The Liberator getting drone damage done, and the natural looks like it's picking up and moving along. Ozanst is starting to deal with it. He's got to run by a length into the natural here special the front door is open wow. not getting too much damage done yet now starting to get a couple scvs a very minimal amount of the lings doing wonders here not yeah, just getting scvs but also distracting Ooh. special off the attack yeah pulling him all the way back here this ling attack from mazansta really turned the tables already just a small move a small bit of units doing so much this liberator is going to go down the spore crawler but not before a chunk of drones go down yeah the liberator harassment was really not that bad but i think special was expecting more from that attack at the front base answer actually ends up taking care of of it very easily. Now gonna just use this medevac while he can. The Woodermine apparently is still gonna have to be cleaned up, but uh, will that Woodermine or the Hellion drop be able to do anything in the main? Well, it's going to have to. I feel like uh, starting, the game is starting to fall into Zanster's advantage here pretty heavily as the worker counts get up there. As he starts to get those upgrades out, these three Hellions are going to look looking to reset the board here. Oh, relatively undefended third base. The main base is where he's going to go here with these Hellions. Yeah, there was an Overlord that spotted that, so he knows exactly where to go. The, <laughs> the Queen is uh, very weak, and that might also have been a target, but of course oh. he has to go for the drones. Nice surround. Beautiful surround there with the drones from Zanster taking very minimal damage. And oh. this Raven is going to get across the creep there and get some damage done. And yeah. Special is going for a wonky sort of Gumi Mech follow-up here with a bunch of Cyclones and plus one attack. Yes. Albeit a little bit later than I expected. Mech in that Cyclone that could be so aggressive. And this is a bit of a smaller map, so you can actually rally those Cyclones forward, the Hellions forward, and you think you are about to get surrounded. And Zancer absolutely needs to scout this and understand mm. what type of mech it is too. Yeah, if a bunch of upgraded Cyclones are on the edge of your creep and that's the first time you see them, it is a bad news bears for the Zerg more often than not. Finally clearing up that Widow Mine, which did do a lot for a Special there as the game went on, but yeah, you see, here is the rally from Special. He's going straight through the throat of Zanster as well, using the Raven to clear up the Creep Tumors, saving that energy for Auto Turrets as well for extra beef and extra damage. There there's Auto Turrets go. Trados has had enough. <laughs> there he goes as well. Uh, this is, I think, the first time he's seen what the composition is looking like, and he's still going to stick to Ling, Bane Ling, Hydro with those Ling upgrades finishing up the Bane Lings. They get those connections on the Hellions, or Hellbats. Uh, it can actually be very instrumental to dealing with the Cyclones after as where the Lings come in, but it is a bit of a dance for both players. It truly is. A little bit of a Ling attack there, going for the third base. Does delay special a little bit. Gives Zanster some time to get that tech up. He would really love to have a few Hydralis right now to help him out, or even Roaches on the front line here to help him tank. Because the Queens and Lings really can't do it all by themselves. Yeah, something a little bit tankier. A nice Ling run by once again might distract Special, because it's like that's really the thing you don't see as the observers, is that this is just distracting him from something that should be very micro-oriented on the front lines. You don't want to be just dragged on a creep unnecessarily. Something like this is huge. Every time we see a Ling run by by Zanster, we see on the minimap special pull his whole army back to deal with it. And more and more time for the Zerg, it's better and better for Zanster, whose upgrades are getting up there. He has Hydralisks now, he has the tech up that he needs. Will he have the numbers though, and will he get that position? Hellbats are morphing. Auto turrets going down here, and special engages. He does not, uh, Zancer does not have speed, so it's maybe actually kind of hard to get those beautiful connections. There's simply not that many Banelings, so a good split mm. of the Hellbats helps take care of that. But Special, you know, being very hesitant, doesn't want to throw away this army while he's only just now building up his tank and Thor count. A Ling run by here from Zansta trying to get into the natural of Thor and Hellion stop it. Another Liberator here from Special doing more damage, actually killing Egg as well as killing five drones. So a little bit of damage done by both players here and Special in true TY fashion start to shoot ahead with those SCVs. He's been churning SCVs this whole game long. to be looking for that fourth base soon. And Zansta is getting up in a hive. It's not too far away and a Spire as well. Yeah, yeah, certainly going to that late game, recognizing the, the, the mech game that he is up against. Hellion's going to continue trying to fry some drones, and 10 isn't really that bad. The Liberator, I'm not going to go for that. Okay. Ooh, right. okay. Oopsie-daisy. Oopsie-daisy. So the Liberator will kill a few drones, but will go down. 
Yeah, 13 drone kills though, uh, but still Zanster with 85 drones is still a pretty healthy economy. It's a shame he has to put some of that lava into drones, but as it stands, his army supply is hurting a little bit. A lot of it is going to be in roaches as well. 11 of them on the way. More Hellions looking for more drones. Zanster will clean this up, but how much drones is he going to lose before he does? Not that many. No, about three more. That was actually really well handled by Zanser's army just happened to be in a very close position out as well, so that's really nice. But I look at these supplies, and I'm wondering, is Zanser actually in a good position? He was getting up to this high tech, but he doesn't have that much of a bank. He'll certainly be getting one soon with all of these bases. But Special's also on his way to ramping up that production and getting maxed out pretty soon. And Vipers just aren't as deadly as they were if you were watching StarCraft, you know, two or three years ago. Vipers come out, and you're like, what well, does it matter if I was, like, 60 supply ahead? All right, Vipers <laughs> are good. Not really anymore, and Terran Blazer's gotten so good at dealing with them as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Viking production already beginning here for special. It's going to be good against those Broodlords. Corruptors and also good against those Vipers. So a good addition to his army as he takes his fourth now. Expanding towards the Zerg. Zanster looking for another run by. But yeah, when you, are, when you are a Zerg and you are equal army supply against a guy that's mecking, generally it's pretty good for the Terran. We've got the Great Spire already, already morphing here. This will be a planetary soon. And Special's not going to let any Zerg through this door. Yeah. I mean, despite opening with what can be a very aggressive type of mech with those Cyclones, he's really playing into quite the turtle style and trying to match expansions even with Zanster. Zanster, uh, you know, doing his own little bit of aggression here and there. He does want to try and keep Special off from getting bases too easily, but definitely can't keep him off that fourth base. And that should have Special set for a little while. Mm, and with this army of Special, all oh, the splash damage potential, the tanky potential of this army really wants those choke points. It wants Zanster to overcommit. Liberator harassment again from Special, doing more and more drone damage, this time getting very decent numbers before yeah. it gets taken out. Very nicely done. Just and Queen as well, it. whoops. There you go. Oh, Second wow. Queen. Oh. Ooh. Pretty close, pretty close. So Zanster has a little attack again, just poking and prodding wherever it can, noticing maybe weak points for a future bigger engagement, but Speaking of that, I mean, he's continuing to get upgrades, more Vipers are on the way, and he does have a Greater Spire, but I don't think he's produced any Corruptors yet. Yeah, I haven't seen any Corruptors just yet from Zanster, but they will oh. be on the way, no doubt. Broodlord's pretty good against Mech, historically. But Viper's pretty good as well. He's yeah. been making a lot of Vipers, actually. What's his uh, Viper count out? Yeah, he's I was got three with four more on the way. Yeah, there's actually a couple of games uh, that I was able to witness where like player like Scarlet, which he's not playing Protoss, would go for a lot of Vipers. I mean, like 10 plus Vipers, kind of insane amounts. And it's like, okay, I get the idea, but is that really worth the investment? Because it's not that cheap, they're hive tech. But uh, maybe Zanster also going with that same idea. So not actually using his Broodlords yet. Zanster slowly pushing that creep towards the planetary here, special. Uh, yet again, looking to attack towards that third base. Special sees this expansion at the top right here of Zanster just with a spotting Marine. Yeah, so, nice one. Knows all about that. Mm -hmm. Of course, Special is starting to take the map away from Special, though. But you know what? Special's army hits so hard that when he moves out, he may still take the game for sure. What is on that production tab? Is that two barracks? Uh, one, one. Yeah. I don't know why it's one, one. That's, but that's a little strange. They don't stack on top strange. of each other. Yes, that's a. Uh... Okay, but I think it's actually a lot more interesting that it is also just more barracks on the way. I mean, yeah. is it actually two or is it a messed up of one? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea, yeah. I, I think it actually just bugs. I think so. Okay, well that's, uh, all we got, right. We got some devs here, so. Uh... <laughs> well, I, th I was gonna go into like, if that was multiple barracks, because like, he could be adding in ghosts, but that's not actually happening. It's cool though, it's a draw from Zanster, a very tiny one, but going after an upgrade, good choice. Yeah, getting this armory is fantastic. That slows down the power creep of this mech army. Getting a few SCVs to boot, then loads up and leaves. Nice harassment here from Zanster. Yeah, I do like the idea. I mean, a lot of people bring up, you know, like, why don't they just, like, circumvent the turtling terror and be going for a bunch of Nidus worms? And they're like, well, it's a little complicated. So, after all, if you drop with overlords, you will be chased down by what is a uh, billion Ooh. Vikings that have been built. Yeah. Another engagement here. Special's army a lot more powerful than Zanster's. Will take this out. He does cut into the Hellion count quite heavily and loses a bunch of SCVs as well. Eight of the SCVs have gone down. Mm -hmm. Oh, the yeah, CC. Can't really engage Hireless just with a plain command center, apparently. I mean, it has fire and like it does have fire. Know, tons of weight on it, but that's, that's okay, yeah. it just burned down. Uh, yeah, that's a nice snipe, though, from Zanser actually getting the economy a little Ooh. bit, but all of his Vipers caught up against the Viper, or the Vikings, uh, trying to send out those parasitic bombs and not doing as much damage as it once used to. That's right, the parasitic bomb doesn't quite have as much sting. Zanster, though, has been really great this game. I've got to say, he's doing great jobs. The harassment, the, the run buys here at the third, denying that CC, in fact, killing the CC. Massive moves from Zanster, really just putting the pedal to special here, mm -hmm. who uh, is honestly seeming like he's a little bit chokeholded at the moment against Zanster. He doesn't really want to move out just yet without having his army as strong as it could be, because he, he really just has one big push in him. 
Yeah. I mean, he was starting to bank a little, but that snipe on that base is, is going to be increasingly more important, especially with, you know, having to lift an orbital command over. That might actually work out. He does have another command center on the way, though. He did have some excess cast, and they were pretty close to being maxed, both of them. But Dancer, obviously, look at that mini map, is really out expanding him. Yeah, he's taking the map away, which often happens with the mech players. They are usually quite totally and quite passive, even though he opened with a Cyclone Hellbat style, which is more, uh, most mobile form of mech. It is now turtle time. We have the, uh, the Hellions coming in here for some drones, and they're definitely going to find a bunch. Blue Flame is complete, so they're just roasty toasting. There's a huge barbecue here happening at this bottom hatchery. Yeah, and while nothing is responding, go to the third base. Why not? But that is where the army is. So... Oh, wow. Big oh. pickoffs there. Viper's just Ugh. killing Oh, him. seven of the Vipers have died. Yeah, that was not the best. He was, I guess, focusing on this big Overlord drop. Bigger than before, five Overlords going to that main base where the production is. I'm not sure if he's putting his starports, but uh, that's still his factory production, which we'll need eventually again. This is actually potentially extremely dangerous here for Special. Yeah. Getting these production facilities be absolutely massive. He's trying to get that huge army up, and uh, Zance is going to make sure that that gets stopped in his tracks, taking out one of the factories, another one very likely going to be taken out before he has to pull out as well. Special I mean, pulling his whole army back from the siege position as well. Yeah, I mean, he's trying to be very careful. He realizes this could be a distraction tactic for another big army somewhere else that is a sizable, but not all, of Zancer's army. Oh, wow. And the, he tries to split pretty well. His tanks are doing a good, good job. The tanks are doing a good job. A couple of them are blocked from the main, though, because of this one siege tank on the ramp. And all of the Hellions died to the Roaches and Hydras as well. So a good chunk of the army supply of special is gone. Yeah, a bit of an awkward little, you know, unsiege, siege, unsiege right there. But he is eventually going to clean that up. He did lose that production. But I wondered where he put his starports. That's at the third, and he is trying to go into Mass Raven. But starting to really lose out on the ground here. He's got to be careful about transitioning too soon. These tanks will clean up the Hydras on the main, but meanwhile, Zan's defining an opening here with some Hydras and, a, and, a, and a, a Ravager for some reason. Just looking for any kind of damage he can, and he does just get more and more SCVs. He keeps cutting into the mech count. He just won't let Special get to the comfort zone of that max mech, mech army. Yeah. But yeah. this transition to Ravens, I've seen it pull magic before, so we'll <laughs> see from Special. Yeah, of course, it's said too soon, but it's a 16, 17 minute game. I mean, too, too quickly. You know, he's been losing out in his tank count, and you. You have four tanks and, you know, 10 Ravens, but that still is up against a 200-200 Zerg army. It's like, oh, well, Raven's really that good. And it's it's a very difficult time right now, but I like the way that Special has expanded this time around to the middle of Interloper, which is often even forgotten about, I would say. Mm, a lot of these SCVs actually idle right now instead of mining from the minerals. <laughs> Special actually could use this mineral income as well. He doesn't have a ton of mineral income. Oops, hello, Mr. Ravager. Down you go. Yeah. It's taken out by those tanks there. So the big deal here is that a lot of the Vipers are dead. We see that they are starting to abduct a couple of these tanks. Zansta could get another one here on the edge, pull it on the creep, take it out, easy peasy. But uh, he doesn't have that. He would have had 10 Vipers now if it wasn't for that huge pickoff of, uh, of um, Special earlier. Yeah, just keeping his Vipers in the middle of the map. It's definitely a mistake from Zanster, but it's now trying to use them to their fullest ability. Special should be on it. His Vikings were like, I need to go take care of the Overlords. I need to come back with Vipers. So now that they're here, they should be able to really stop that type of pull and grab and one by one from going down. But Zanster, I mean, they both are trying to still get max. No one really has a huge bank. And Zanster might be taking some nice little grabs and nice little drops. Is it really amounting to enough to stop a mech army from getting to max mech, which is very scary. Yeah, well, that is that is the big question here, and certainly what Zance is trying to avoid, just stopping the mech army and delaying it further and further as he takes the map expanse, just has incredible income and gets the bank that he wants. Because what you really want is a huge bank of minerals and gas so that when your max Zerg army dies to the mech army, you can replenish and overwhelm. It's so much harder for the Terran to remax than it is for a Zerg. I like that we do see Paths and Glens on the production tab. We are going to be seeing some fungals, as Zancer recognizes like that, that air army is going to be a little scary. And that's where his Ravagers, which a lot of them have died by now, but might be uh, quite useful. Seven of them would still do a lot of damage on a very clumped up army. Absolutely. Versa Biles trade very, very nicely here, special being so patient and careful here, dropping turrets, static defense, getting the Raven count up as he takes a massive air army, just straight up. Look at all these Vikings here. Yeah, a couple of ducks coming in, getting rid of two of the Vikings, but there are so many more where that came from. Yeah, it's nice they saved that Viper. I don't know how many times it's actually going to be able to happen, though, honestly. With so many Vikings, you should be losing the Vipers at the same rate you're losing those Vikings. And they, as I said, like they both aren't quite banking a lot yet. Zanster has stopped with so many drops, so he's starting to get that bigger and bigger bank. But there's even missile turret rings around the natural base. Only one Hydra gets out. Wow, it Go looks extremely it, aggressive when it's uh, hacking away with its claws there. I just... Get away from me! Start, start, start! <laughs> Does get rid of that turret. 
That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and Special will clean up this Hydra eventually, question mark, but he will actually get it. This little run by is fantastic, by the way. Zanster just reacting now, losing 13 drones in the, in the thick of it, though. Poor Hydra. Yeah. Well, tried his best, but... He did, yeah. He scratched and clawed his way at that guy in the missile turret. This guy's just trying to have a job, man. He is. Pooping a bit of creep here to make sure that the expansion is a little bit slower for a special. Special still with a very scary army. It is almost fully upgraded. And he has a Raven count getting up there. 20 tanks. Oh my god, that's going to hit so hard against this ground army of Zanster. <laughs> and look at it start to shell away at these roaches. They just evaporate. Yeah. But he still is preventing Special from taking this very north base, though. Now that we uh, do have special maxed out on a very scary mech army with a lot of upgrades. It comes around that time, you know, 20 minutes into the game where the Zerg player is like, okay, that mid game went really great. I was dropping everywhere. I was denying on bases. It looked awesome. And then, oh, okay, you're maxed out. How do I actually approach this? It's a legitimate question. How do you approach an army that isn't missing anti-air so breathers aren't the answer? And if they play smart and steady, they're planning on you breaking them. And like, how do I do that as a Zerg? My Vipers are getting killed. The Broodlords are on an option. And the ground army is just, it's not good anymore against tanks. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, these tanks are never going to trade too badly against Roach Hydra, especially when they're fully upgraded. We have Adrenal on the way here. So a good Ling count could definitely wrap around and get into the face of the Siege Line. But of course, there are a bunch of units, like a bunch of Hellbats are going to make sure that that doesn't happen. Another drop here looking for the main again, I think. Looking for whatever production may be left there. Actually, all the production seems to be here at the third base. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, there's certainly the, a very important production. So I, th that was a fantastic move earlier on. It might not be amounting to enough to actually be worth the drops every time he does it. But some nice abducts coming out here. The Vikings were out of position, so two of the Vipers end up <laughs> living after all those abducts. Yeah, Fung will go on oh, that single floor there. Oh, Seeking so Missile's coming down. Zance is just splitting his forces out, not taking too much damage. Yeah, and his Vipers did actually get the last shots. They all died, and he's going to have to replace those. But the job of the main base stopped a couple of command centers from coming up, and he's going to get the rest of the factory production, I do believe. And maybe even some Vikings? Oh, well, auto turrets. Yeah, even eating into the auto turret energy is not too bad. In fact, uh, they're not actually going to do anything, these auto turrets. He's going to lose another production facility here. The tanks are really his answer against the ground army. But uh, hmm. they can be picked off one at a time from the high ground here, these Hydralisks. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks like it's it's decent damage. You can see the just conundrum that is bringing tanks up that ramp like that. It's lost like three tanks and several production facilities here. Yeah, yeah. No, that was probably worth it for what he got. But it is like, is this actually going to the, the end of something? That was just a step along the way. And Special mm. still on enough bases to get maxed out again. Because that is probably the number one problem, is that he initially denied that fourth base. It looked fantastic. Ten minutes later, he hasn't really denied the fifth or the sixth. Yes, indeed. Special does need to get across the map and start doing damage here. Apart from drone kills, he needs to start killing hatcheries. He needs to start wiping out this army. A bunch of auto turrets here will kill this hatchery before they go off cooldown. By the looks of things, just getting it. Yes, yeah, auto turrets pretty good. Neural Parasite is on the way. That's going to be interesting to see that used. Oh, yeah. I mean, you see that sometimes versus Protoss, and that's still pretty difficult to pull off with feedback, but what exactly are you looking for with the Terran? Oh, a big engagement around that sixth base, though. Oh, yeah, a bunch of three, three links here with Adrenal going for that planetary, and it is going to go down. No repair there, and the Corrosive Pile is coming in to hit these auto turrets, looking for big connections on that clumped up air army, and Zanster pushes this position, killing a planetary in the progress. He finally gets a really powerful move by taking down a good chunk of the army and that planetary special. I'd started to rebuild a couple of command centers. Yes, he has through, no, three more on the way, just putting it right next to the one that died. So he's going to have to take that loss of supply and say, like, well, hopefully I can rebuild again, because Special is the one playing the really patient game. He sure is. And I mean, his bank is looking pretty dismal right now, his Special. In fact, his income is looking very dismal right now. He's running out of mineral patches and gas geysers here. I mean, the gases are churning away as well as they can, but they are still uh, not enough, I would say, for a comfortable position for the Terran player. Yeah. It's in a little it bit of a rough spot. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, this, this is definitely a problem that Special should have been up against, really, is that, you know, as you start to take these more and more bases, you leave some stack defense in the form of tanks, and then they find that one spot where there's only three tanks, there are only four tanks, and the Vikings are all dealing with something else, like these Overlord drops, which are now all, oh, this is like so much worse than Virtues and Hydras, man. A Druno yes. Gland, three, three Lings, and I tear through every single building here. Absolutely, they are going to shred everything on the ground. He could actually force a bunch of liftoffs here, because one of the best ways to deal with it. Uh, his army just won't be able to go up in this map of time, but he does find it with the Vikings. The nice, nice. pickoff here for Special. That is such a headache reliever. It's like Poppins by Ibuprofen. I don't have to deal with Ling's my main base, thank God. <laughs> um, and probably he doesn't have to deal with, with uh, Overlord drops again. There's been like a couple of stops every time. Zancer's been like, oh yeah, those are a good idea, and build, built them once more. But Ultras, I'm not really sure if they're going to be too helpful. We never again saw the Broodlords ever used. Just like, you know, I was like, no, nope, that's not going to work out. Just kidding. 
Yeah, Brutal is very, very tanky, but these are fully upgraded tanks here, and he does have quite a few count of them, even though they've a lot of them have been taken out. Big engagement here from Zansa, looking for another base kill. Oh, he's going for it, and it looks like he's going to get it too. Oh, no, wow, this is done. so annoying for special. Yeah. What's really scary is that once those Ravens are allowed to gain energy and there is a push from him, those point defense drones are going to make the Hydras just feel like they're not even part of the army. But every single time, he's just using that energy in such a you know continuous fashion that it's really not working out as Special would have planned. That Infesta tried to borrow, but in the end, gets Siege taken out there. Bit of a mistake from Zansa, but no big deal. He still is in a relatively comfortable position here. He's maxed. He still has all his map control. He has the entire... Like, he has two-thirds of the map here from the Terran pl player who is running out of places to expand. He's taken this hatchery away in the north. He's had the bottom left for a while. And yes, Special's been doing a really good job taking out drones and that sort of thing, but he hasn't been able to replenish his SCV count up while it's Zerg sitting on 30 more workers here. Yeah, I'm not sure he's on a surplus of command set or orbitals specifically, too. I definitely know he's on four, I believe, but... Yeah, that could become a problem as the game goes on, but Special decides now is finally the time to push. His Ravens do have a bit of energy, and Zantz have to decide, do I try and take a direct engagement or circumvent the army again? A Special kind of needs to end this game soon with this army if he wants to win this one. The longer the game goes, the better it's going to get for Zanster. These tanks getting picked up here. This position has just been action-packed this entire game. Zanster oh. heading in there every time with Lings, with Banelings, with Roaches, with Hydras. Does damage every single time here. More point defense throws going down, more energy not being used aggressively. Yeah, and those the, that entire air army went to defend that. So the army over here is defended, undefended. Those Vipers could have gotten in with blinding clouds. Looks like a little bit too late for that, but his base was once again undefended. That's the third command center to go down. It is, and a lot more energy actually being used on uh, Hunter Seeker missiles, which don't even kill the Vipers, does hurt them quite a bit. And it looks like the Ravens got Parasitic Bombed a little bit there. They are a little bit low oh. in hit points. Big fungal there from Zanster. And there's oh. the Parasitic Bomb combo. Bam, 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 down it goes. And that is the primary army here of Special, and he just has to go for it. All of his Vikings got torn down. Link's the Junior Glands going on top of all of his production once again. Probably going to go into third base and take out the Starports as well. This is truly Special's last desperate push, and he's got to believe in the power of the Raven. He does indeed, and they're already so low in hit points without a ton of energy banks either. They do have a bit to be able to cast a few spells here, but not a ton. Ah, oh, special. I don't see him winning this one. How does he get that position that he needs to win this game? There's so much creep spread, there's so much Zerg everywhere. Zanster always hitting where special is not. Yeah, Zanster played a really great game. It's been so long, and there was times where it was like, well, is he just throwing away units and losing over time? But no, he continued to take the map. He continued to find the weak points. I mean, special, that left side of the, the map actually was just the, the worst time for him in this game. Never really got to it and just continuously lost army because of it. And Sansa's playing this one by the books, not letting a Terran max out and power creep here on mech. He is now going to probably lose this hatchery, but Zansta can replenish this army. He has a bank, whereas Special does not. He, Special kind of needs to end the game with these units here. Yeah. I mean, it really looked like he was willing to accept this is my last push, but then decides, ah, actually, maybe there's a game here. He's going to try and expand once again, saves this planetary this time, but there's ultras with transfuses, a lot of transfuses, and that's technically anti-air, too, so they could snipe maybe some of these ravens. Uh, Special actually checking, tasting down some of these very, very high energy queens, gets one of them, looks like may get two. Mm. It's not too bad, but again, he yeah. needs to do a lot more than that. The ultras still, with the infestors borrowed, are the scary thing here. Wow, that's a big tank line of Special. Always forget how many tanks he has in this game. Mm -hmm. Well, he's Ooh. finally collected all of them for yeah. protecting all those bases, so it is still a scary army. A lot of his ravens are low energy. One fungal will probably pop, maybe one or two will definitely a parasitic bomb. Fungal combination will pop a lot of them. And Zanster, I mean, he's not willing to take the fight. He doesn't want to throw away this game to one bad fight, but he is still in a good position. Yeah, actually, his bank isn't as comfortable as I would have said earlier. I, I think that if Zanster takes a really inefficient fight, there could be hope here for Special. The mech army is always surprisingly so powerful. Looks like an Ultralisk went down as well. Hmm, actually just got destroyed. Yeah, Zanster, and this is where also the map we talked about much earlier in this cast, almost 30 minutes ago, the chokes are going to be difficult. If you can't find a way to wrap around or get a full surround, then you're going to be just uh, getting slaughtered to the tank splash. Oof. Big splash line there of drones, lined them all up for Special and he barbecues them dead. So, I mean, his economy, Zansta's economy is low, but it is still better than Special's. Yeah, Special. Uh, I'm gonna try and save this planet here. Unfortunately, it's, it's really just gas, uh, not too helpful. Surprisingly, if Sansa makes the mistake of coming in unprotected with those Ultras, Unsiege tanks have decent DPS, so they don't do, ever yeah. underestimate those. But, of course, Special's looking for that engagement where everything's sieged up, the Ravens actually get into the battle and don't die immediately, and then maybe he could take an army fight even down 30 army supply. Income difference being shown here by the Observer. We have more 
Hunter Seeker missiles going down here. Looks like they're going to connect and kill one of the Vipers. Nearly two. Nicely done. Yeah, they're a very important pick, unit to pick off here. The spell casting units are the, potentially the most cost effective unit in the game. Ah. We do have the Ultras here just taking their time. Zans being patient, but he does give special his position here. Oh, and the Ravens detecting the uh, Burrowed Infestors does lose a couple of them there to the Siege Tanks. Oh, that was a very scary moment for both players. One could have lost, either one of them could have lost all their spell casters. But special, this is probably like the most widest open area on this map. Certainly if Zancer was completely maxed out coming in from all of these angles, he could probably take the fight, but he's still scared of the power of the combination of Tanks and Ravens. Mm, he's up a fair bit in army supply. His bank's starting to get up there a little bit. Again, his income is so much better than Special's. But he did break down these rocks, and it looks like he may try and go for a sandwich. Special is aware of this army, of course. He has that sensor tower. And with this spread of tanks, will it be enough, though? These Ravens need to be with the tanks when Zansta decides to close these Zerg jaws upon him. Yeah, I mean, a couple blinding clouds go down. That's going to be really terrible, especially as he clumps up a little bit more here. If there were Lings added in as well, that would definitely confuse the tanks and he's going to solve them super quickly. I can see Zanser taking a very good fight, but actually getting AI'd here while he's still preparing. Yeah, preparing. whoopsie daisies. A lot of damage on his Ultras go down as he tries to pull his units up into one big group here. And Special still can potentially take this if he takes a really good fight. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the hope's not over for him, despite one point going down below 100 supplies, just barely above it. But Zanster, I think, you know, what might be actually really worrying him here is that he's continuously looking at his bank saying, like, oh, I don't have 2,000, 2,000, and this mm. is, this is actually could be my last fight as well if I take the wrong one. That's what I'm concerned about here. I would normally expect 3,000 in gas and minerals here for the Zerg at least. But if he loses his army, it's going to be tough to make it as strong as it once was. He is starting to bank up now, though. The special hasn't been harassing his drone lines for a while. Zanster, he's breaking off a couple Ultras and a handful of Hydras here to do some more damage back at home, pulling the Hellions back with the Air Army back away from these Siege Tanks. And also unseizing all of the tanks to go back for this one little, this one little attack. <laughs> I feel uh. like... At some point, oh, these are actually going to hit. Yeah, this will actually kill quite a bit. Wow, gone. good connections there. Uh, but uh, unseizing everything, though, uh, it looks like he's just going to pick a different position with this army. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like uh, at some point he's have to recognize just like I have to lift my buildings and go along with my expansion process because <laughs> I'm not coming back to save anything. Uh, but not quite at that point yet. He is going to be able to take this left base, the one that's given him so much headache for a long time in this game. Yeah. Uh, but I guess maybe he'll get it once that creep goes away. Uh, Planetary actually killing an Ultralisk here, nearly getting a second one. Zansta does pull back, Marco's a little bit here, does kill it in the end, but of course there's nothing really mining from it anyway. It was just sort of a static defense structure at that point. Split offs here from Zansta to make sure that the point, the uh, Hunter Seeker missiles don't do as much damage as possible. And now he's making 44 lings, and I actually really like the decision from Zansta to get yeah. right up in the face of the Hellion, uh, sorry, the face of the tanks here that don't have too much Hellions anymore. Oh, does he recognize us with the armies? He does. He has a sensor tower right there, but still, can he take it on? That's a pretty wide, it's about the widest concave you're going to get, and a couple of blinding clouds come down as well. They sure do, so the blending has to go down here on the tanks. A lot of them can still fire though, but it looks like Zansta probably just going to have too much here. Some neural parasites on the tanks as well. Zansta finally breaking the back of special and getting game number one. Whoa, I think that is one of the first times I've seen neural parasites successfully on a mech army, and that was still actually a lot of extra damage added. A really great game from our Zurich player and the start of an upset. Absolutely. If Zansta takes a series, we've, a lot of people, including myself, would say that this is an upset special already against the ropes here on stage. Zansta sitting on match point here, of course. This is best of three still. We're not at that stage of the tournament. We're at best of fives just yet in the second stage of the groups. A really strong first game here. Penguin getting on stage to help out Zansta and give him a bit of a coaching advice. And yep. Special's going to need to compose himself and think about what he, need, what he has to get done on the next map here. I mean, Special just lost to DNS, right? I mean, he oh, yeah. was... See, DNS is really good. Like, I've, I've seen a lot of DNS games lately, and he has impressed me, especially this year, but uh, Special's impressed me so much more. And it would really be a, a huge shock to, to me and to most people to see Special go down. Yeah, it absolutely would. Of course, for Zanster, it'd be fantastic. He, he probably recognizes how important this match can be just for, like, if I can win this, then maybe I'm like, my ZVT is actually really, really good, right? Uh, but for Special, he's, he's probably not feeling too hopeful. I mean, he had what seemed to be a good position, too. You know, that wasn't like a cheese, and you're just like, oh, yeah, they cheese, like, I'll give him that one. That was like a really long game where you had a couple of moments where you thought you were okay, you thought you were gonna win, you saw the inevitable mech army being created, and then that guy still managed to run around and beat you to it. Special is such a good mech player, but I would love to see him throw some bio into Ascension IR. I think that this map does have, uh, you know, a lot of Terrans, in including with the uh, Euphemal, of course, going for that sort of battle mech style with the fast cyclones, fast upgrades, that sort of thing. I would love to see Special just try some bio play. I've seen, he's, he, he's impressed me so much with his bio play in the past. I'd love to see him uh, diversify the unit comp here and see if he can 
beat Zanster that way. Try and find a, a strength here because Zanster just... He, he just showed us in game one that he actually absolutely can play against one of the scariest mech players in the whole world and come out ahead. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that he just took on mech like that was pretty impressive. There are certainly some stages where it looked like the undefeatable mech, but he played a very long game where it ended up that he was patient. I mean, he was the one being the aggressive one. Of course, that's what Zerg's got to do, find those weaknesses in the Terran. But, you know, 30-minute game, you're going to have to be patient and recognize that, especially the last couple of minutes, like, I could throw away this game. I need to wait for that bigger bank. Big moment here for Zanstra on stage here in Montreal. Special all but certainly locked in for BlizzCon at this point for those WCS Global Playoffs. But Zanster, he just wants to save face, like get his, get his fans back and show people that he's as good as he once was. Yeah. And this will certainly start to swing things around for him if he manages to take this series, especially if it's a 2-0 on stage in the early stages. Oh, that would be a big boost to your morale, but uh, it would be very difficult to do. This guy has a lot of uh, tricks up his sleeve, and as you said, special can play Bio 2, which I hope to see. Indeed, and let's see if it happens here in a session to IF for game number two in the top left here from Psystorm Gaming. This is Zanster! And in the bottom right here, this is special! Very special player indeed. <laughs> Oh, no one's made that pun. You, uh, you need to save the witticisms for the, like, you don't use all of your brain power early stages on those witticisms, Zombie Grub. You've got to save those for the end of the day. Teach me more, WCS. Right. Now, more WCSs, you'll be able to save, save the really impactful jokes for the, uh, for the big, big finals. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. I understand. All right, well, it is Ascension to Ayer, and we just uh, went from what is the smaller map in the map pool, right, uh, to one of the bigger ones. I'm sure that Zanster's gonna feel a little more comfortable, because even though he won that last game, I think that those maps, you know, the chokes, the, the size of it just kind of like, makes Zerg feel like a little like squeezed in, like, ah, oh, there's a lot of room to maneuver, but Ascension Eye are the complete different uh, beast here with the huge open area in the middle, and still one or two big, strong avenues of attack for those counters. Yeah, it's got sort of those northern and southern attack paths, a little bit smaller, huge wide open middle with a high ground that's often the site for a lot of the battles here. And uh, yeah, that big opening there that the Observer's showing us right now, is where Zerg wants to be. It's very, very tough to take that area away from a Zerg as a Terran. Yeah, it absolutely is. We're seeing some interesting expansion uh, processes as well from the different races. As we, That's actually one of the small things that I really enjoy watching on even not just new map pools, but Abyssal Reef, for instance, in the map pool a few times now. Um, still people are finding new ways to expand, like which direction is actually better. And of course, the Zerg players are going to be trying to expand away, and the Terran players are going to be trying to find that expansion that leads them to that fourth base. So, of course, that's a long ways off, talking about thirds and fourths here, and we still have to see what Special has in store for his build. He started off last game with a hell of an attack. He did, and he went gas first again. So again, a quick quick factory here after the uh, the Barracks and Reaper from Special. And he's getting across the map with that Reaper to see what is up in Zanster Town. Meanwhile, Zanster just looking pretty regular here, getting a handful of wings out to deal with the Reaper. Going to get his third hatchery pretty soon here. Mm -hmm. Saturate that natural a bit. There's that third hatch going down. Uh, he certainly had his uh, scary moments, but let's not forget his just basically four or six lings that's countered against Special's early aggression certainly helped him out in that last game. So weird to think of the mid game when it was such a long late game, but it looks like Special not going for anything too aggressive goes for a third CC. Yeah, a bit of greed here from Special. There's a bit of a quicker expansion than the last game, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he is going to get those Hellions on the map with some map control. Rip that away from the Zerg. Generally can do a pretty good job just with Lings in the early stages, but uh, Hellions will see to that. Uh, of course, noted last game that Xanser didn't have a lot of scouting going down. He didn't actually see multiple factories and had to be like, oh, there's, there's Hellions and Cyclones. So mm. that might be a mistake in this game as well. And a third CC is just allowed to happen. It's like, oh, I could have been droning at that one time. And that's actually a lot to the final push because a guy like Special, his macro is really good. He's actually just untouched this entire time with three CC, gets it land on location, no problem. He will just push you. We saw that earlier with you Thermal, but he didn't actually win that game. I think Special could. Uh, I absolutely agree with you. And in that last game, you know, Special's kind of like, if you leave him alone, he will win. But Zanster did such a good job of just consistently picking him away. It was like death by a thousand cuts game one on Interloper. Yeah. His Hellions is circling around, looking for these Lings, actually just missed them. They're coming through the north path here. It's looking for a natural, I mean, if they're really, really lucky, they can get to the main and have a look. Two Hellions out of position, nope. Ooh, well, this is nice. <laughs> it's just, it's right there. Yeah, sees the third CC, gets in here, sees the production here for Special. I mean, the Lings do die, but they absolutely were worth their weight in gold just now for Sansa, getting all the information he could want. 
course, there's different ways to see that as a third CC. There's just certainly t timings. You'd be like, okay, where is it? Oh, okay, it's a third CC. But just seeing it as soon as possible, really, is fantastic for Zancer. He just made 20 links over to try and help out with the, the Hellions. He decides to send them across the map, and those Hellions just go into the main base. Yeah, well, the Lings are completely out of position because they're going for a run by, so it's all up to the Queens here to deal with these Hellions. How many drones are going to go down? Quite a few by the looks of things. Seven going down, eight right now. Special still oh, with, no. the, with the Hellions alive, oh, no. but the natural. He didn't actually continue to make Hellions. He instead swapped over for that Bax. Oh, he has no. Like, no production. There's only those Marines that we saw on the natural base. The SVs have to help out here. The production is finally finished, but this is so much damage. It is, and a lot of the Lings are still alive. The front wall here, Special has to repair with the SCVs that are in the main and keep them away. Yes, he lost 12 drones, but he lost 14 SCVs back at home, and the natural cannot be retaken here until he gets that Marine count up. Yeah, exactly. Completely lost control of the natural. Supply depot goes down. The engineering bay is going to go down here. These lings are apparently going to survive too, so they'll just come back later and stop maybe the third base from going down as well. Dancer with a very powerful move there. You know, we were like, hey, was that a good idea? It was a brilliant idea. Yeah, absolutely. He's completely locked Major, or Special in rather, into his main base, and there's no way for him to get out of here. How's he supposed to take his natural? Is he supposed to take his third? He can make a ton of SCVs for three CCs, but if you're not, if you're only mining from one base, uh, I feel bad for actually wanting Bio here. It's because he is transitioning <laughs> into Bio, but uh, that transition uh, really cost him this natural here. This, this Ling timing was brilliant. Yeah, that is certainly a weakness when you only go for so many Hellions, whether it's a third CC or not. Like, even if he went for a Starport, too, he just that they're necessary for big Ling floods early on. You know, six Marines won't cut it, but 20 will, and it's just going to take a while to get to 20. So, mm. oh. uh, Special does have Stim here. A lot of Ling's still alive, but with an SCV pull on these Marines with Stim, should be able to engage this. Yeah, he should be fine, but Zancer wants to test him. There's no combat shields, and that was oh, almost a surround. He finds that position in between the minerals there, trading as viciously as possible. Marines, of course, taking a lot of damage from being stemmed here, mm. but uh, they do hold the natural for now. Meanwhile, Zancer knows I am just clean and able to spread creep here, get the fourth hatchery up. That said, though, he's not making drones with his space. He is making lings, lings, lings. Mm. He's going to bust it. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, he's getting the upgrades, too, so... If you just wait to the medevacs to show themselves, you could definitely go in there. But the Balian has like a little ill time for that. Mm. He might just be looking for just the perfect defense so he can continue on with being greedy. So he's like, yeah, I'm not going to just... safety. Because that's the thing about Terrans, right? You think you're doing a great job, and then 16 Marines suddenly slaughter everything. You're like, well, that's, you know, that's <laughs> good too. And uh, not letting that happen, having excess to send across the map again to look for another weak point. I actually kind of like this move. Now the Lings. Now the Grievous Lings being broken off here, looking for that natural special, ready to play this time with those Lings, deflects them with the Marines. 16, of course, unload here, and they're going for this attack, nearly getting an overlord. Lings surrounding and, and just forcing those medevacs to pick up the Marines and pull back. It's truly a weak double drop. And yeah. No combat shields, no 1-1. One, one. In fact, only with one engineering base, I'm going to have one. Like, this is not... This is not at all the game that Special wanted to play with 3CC, but it's not even the game he really wants to play trying to come back into it, because Terran certainly can, um, but he's still only just now letting his 3CC over, and no counter-aggression has been done. 1-1's one, going to finish for the Zerg here. He's going to have Lair and be able to get centrifugal hooks as well. Speed Banelink's not too far away. Ten of them being morphed here defensively. Special is looking for this fifth hatchery being taken very greedily on the low ground here by Zanster. Yeah, that, that was pretty greedy, but I think it was a right call, and yeah, he just I takes agree. care of it with Lings. Zanster with a... More than enough army supply to be able to deflect this Terran army. And again, with that single engineering bay, like you mentioned, just getting one upgrade at a time for this bio. Meanwhile, double upgrades at a time here for the Zerg. And there's that scary Hydlus den going down for Zanster, who is already in a lovely spot. Yeah, he's in a Ooh. great spot. Oh, nice distraction tactic here. Those do not have speed, so they're gonna take a while to come over. Well, cleans this one up, and we'll clean that one up. And they go into the main instead. Liberator here looking for that drone line, gets out of range of that spore crawler. The Queens bat away the, the medevacs and the Liberator's actually shooting a queen right now. Looks like he just doesn't get her because she gets transfused in the last minute there. Beautiful defense from Zanster. Yeah, Zanster's still in a very good position. Just used, I was waiting to see what he's going to use all those minerals for, and there we go, nine Hydras. Uh, still has a decent force here that can take on the Marines, even if he tries to focus fire. It's a little too many. And Zanster is still safe. Special, unfortunately, you know, he can distract one, two, three places, but going up the middle of the uh, map and actually going for the deadly attack is... Really difficult to do on Ascension Iyer when you're already so behind. Special coming in for Banelings, but actually gets a little bit too deep there. It loses a cluster of Marines to those Banelings. Yeah. And that's still alive and a bit further down the path here. Sansa sees these four Medivacs moving across the map with a bunch of Marines. They're deep on creep, though. They're going to pull back. Where's the Medivac support? Sniped by Hydras. This is not looking so good. He's going to be pushed back in the main base. And 
in the middle of the map once again, just picks up what he can. It's going to become a very difficult choice for him. Do I decide to continue trying to be the aggressive Terran? I usually am pushing across the middle of the map, rallying across the middle of the map, or do I try and just turtle because this game is not going my way? Going for a drop here in the natural. He will get a handful of drones here with these Marines at least, but he needs to do a lot more than that. He is so far down in economy here. Zanster is 70 supply up and up 30 of that in workers. Double his army supply almost to Zanster as well. He's ahead in every single way here. And he's heading towards Hive, while Special's just trying to get a, th a third and fourth uh, secured here. Yeah, I feel like these should be the only units out on the map for him. You know, he tried the middle push, and we saw well that worked out not too well. So only maybe a medevac drop here and there to harass, but he's not going to be getting a killing blow. He absolutely cannot. In fact, he could be waiting for Zanster's killing blow. And now that Hydra's are out, it's a little bit stickier with those dropships as well. Zanster with enough units to surround these Marines. It does actually look like he's going to maybe be able to cancel this CC, though. Oh, no, the Marines... Oh, get oh, in there. Stop them, stop them, stop them. Yeah. There we go. Nearly got the CC. Uh, we'll go up for now. Yeah. Well, Special is now getting to factory production. He didn't have any of it, really, until just now, and adding the second one to kind of compensate a little bit. Hopefully fixes that rally from the main base as well. But going to four bases, he could hope that Zancer tries the long game, the one that I'm not going to throw away, gets a, even brood lords, and maybe that's where Special gets to like a 180 max, and maybe he can take a fight too there. Pretty nervous for the third base slow ground here of Special. Zanseth pill poises for a big attack by the looks of things. Mm. And there's not a whole lot here. Special stimming down. He's got one siege tank. Marines coming in here. Medivac's not here at the point. And most of his armies in the middle of the map. He's coming back now. Ten SEVs go down. And he will deflect this. But that's another big hit to an economy that he really couldn't afford. Yeah, and that fourth base is going to be under attack soon as well. Zanser through the front of the map finds oh, man. it. Oh, Ooh. Good oh, with a mind hit, hit, but he does cancel the CC, which was the goal there for those links. Yeah, that's really nice. Obviously, a bit of a stretch when he's lacking the pressure to even take a base on location is back to three in 53 SCVs. Everything on fire back at home for special. It's like the this is fine meme for, for special right now in game number two. He's in trouble. <laughs> this is absolutely not fine. Uh, I mean, this is... <laughs> It, it, it's not the, the last attack. He hasn't brought his tanks here, but he's looking for at least some type of control over this game. And Xanser's just going to continuously try and be like, okay, you go over there, I go over here. Because even though he could take a main fight, a main engagement, uh, oh, he doesn't man. seem like he wants to. Xanser actually has a ton of units on attack and defense here. Not a ton of Banelings. There they go. They're rolling in. This hatchery very, very low from earlier, so it will get taken out. But Special's going to need to pull back out of here. Oh. Run, run, pick up. <laughs> run. Pick up in time. One tank is sieged, but not enough to deal with these Hydras. That would have been a good idea if he had like five tanks each. Yeah. <laughs> would have saved his base, but... Oh, uh, again, Special just not being able to deal with Zanster's harassment in multiple spots here. He is with a big drop in the main, though, and a lot of Zanster's army is nowhere near it. Yeah, he's responding to the Liberator instead of the main base. So this ends up being quite the good attack. He's going to go for the... Oh, 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 never mind. Oh, oh. The Banelings came. Yeah, yeah, there they go. So much for that attack, and this attack looks a lot better from Zanster. The Ling's getting up and taking out a couple siege tanks. The Hydra's doing damage, and the Banelings looking for the mineral line. GG is called, and Zanster 2-0 special in the second group stage here. That is a massive showing here on stage of the Swedish Zerg. That was fantastic. You can see it on his face as well, and hugging his manager at number one. And then there's special that everyone expected such good things, not just up against Zanster, but in this tournament. Is lost against two guys. He just no one, no one thought he would. Multiple semi-final performances and special on a brand new team was looking to show and turn heads here, but Sansta with a huge upset here. What a action-packed series! And we're going to cross to Mal with an interview with our winner, Sansta. Absolutely brilliant performance. Brilliant, brilliant. It was a very clinical TVZ. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm so happy I managed to beat him. He's, uh, in my opinion, the best player here and uh, the one I'm by far the most afraid of. So I thought I had like 10, 15% going into this, but uh, somehow I managed to do it. I mean, where have you been since 2015? You have, you've been off the grid. Well, you've been into tournaments, but your name hasn't been really appearing on the board a lot. Um, yeah, I had a huge drop off towards like the start of 2016. Uh, a lot of things were going on in my uh, my personal life, so I was kind of considering retirement. Uh, but yeah, but uh, I I stuck with it, and I'm enjoying StarCraft a lot more these days than I ever have before. And uh, yeah, I'm just playing, practicing, having a good time. Yeah, and above for sticking out and not retiring. I mean, look at look at your skill level right now. It'd be a loss for the fans out there that love watching you play. 
and have to lose you at the tournament, that would be that would be heartbreaking for us, right? So now, 2017 season has so far has not been that great for you, but clearly, clearly with this brilliant performance of TVZ, you look like you're back. Um, yeah, I think it takes some time for practice to pay off and for uh, skill level to show. Like the last tournament at Valencia, I met Major in the round of 16, and like I said, I think he's the strongest opponent for me. So. I've had a couple of rough series here and there, and that's kind of all it takes uh, to not post big results. And sweet revenge, right? Sweet revenge. Thank you very much for the interview. Congratulations on your investment. Best of luck, buddy. Thank you. That's right. Thank you very much, Malas. We have Zanster. Strong showing and impressive victory there over Special. But most importantly, he knocks Special out of the tournament. And now Special, as much as he is on 3,030 uh, points there in the top eight, that's a little bit worrying for Special, even though it's very difficult for the rest to catch up to that point number, Jeff. I think for him, it's going to be like a similar amount of worry that he was going into this about losing to Zanster. I think he, he was like, well, I mean, I'm going to beat Zanster. I'm the better player. You could even hear it on Zanster's uh, interview there. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, you know, you can kind of see him on that stage, kind of collecting his thoughts and being like, hmm, I didn't expect to lose that. Then he's probably looking at, at the WCS list and being like, I, I'm, I'm safe, I think. And... Uh, but if you notice, if you go to that Team Liquid page, it's it's not green. It is not impossible for him not to make it, but it's very unlikely that he gets uh, dislodged there. I think the the seventh and eighth slot is the one that's the kind of risky, scary one. Um, we should be seeing Mage mm. Special at BlizzCon, um, and hopefully he does better. Because to be honest, to, to kind of tie up his storyline for us in WCS, we Nate and I and you were talking a lot about how he's good enough to win a tournament. I think yep. we shift that. At this point in time, it's like, what's wrong? I mean, you are right. good enough. You didn't get there. And we've had a couple of upsets even, I would say. This was a, not a good showing by him. And then we also had what Nate was talking a lot about too. After he got past Neeb in an amazing series, he actually had a very bad TVZ there as well, mm. where he got put down, I believe, by Snoot pretty yep. hard. So all of a sudden, we got a little bit of a question mark above special, I would say. Yeah, interesting build choices for his maps. I think uh, Interloper playing mechs very difficult. Trying to move all your very slow army through those winding choke points. The counterattack paths are, are great. It was yeah. amazing. Zanster was all over him. The entire map was like him just swallowing him. You look at the mini map. <laughs> you don't really have anywhere that you can go in that position. And then, as Jeff said, as we're watching the game backstage, like just basically just sat there until he died. And, and Zanster was able to overwhelm him. Um, disappointing performance from Major, uh, from Special, excuse me, but I think it's also important to mention that we're still you know, in that, that early group stage. It's, not, yes, it's yes. not like, if this was a round of 16 knockout, I'm floored. I'm like, okay, well, this was really not expected. This is pretty bad, but it's it's not an end of the line type deal for him, and I expect to see Special bounce back. Well, let's yeah. check in with the groups here whilst we continue things on. We can glance over these as these are results coming and then going into group stage number three here in a few moments' time. But uh, let's look at the other page here in this uh, series. Zanster with that win, he's only at 460-ish, you know, WCS points. He still needs to win the whole thing if his hopes are going to be there for BlizzCon. It's it's a long stretch. Even though this has been a fantastic result there for Zanster, there's still a lot of threats in the tournament. I mean, it's nice to see that level. For me, Zanster is still, and it was cool hearing that interview too, where he's like, I'm enjoying StarCraft, I'm playing at a very good level. Yeah, yeah. So it's nice, because if we would go into this tournament previously, I would look at Zanster as like kind of a blip on the map, where it's like, he's a nice guy, good kid, young, young good talent, but there's just bigger sharks in the sea. Now he beats uh, Special, and all of a sudden we're like, okay, let's take a look at him. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of the other interesting results, we do have Tilo winning his group, uh, Petit Drogo disappointingly dropping in that same group, and then the one more match to finish out this round that we do have is Uthermal taking on Jon Snow, which is yeah. is yeah. that decider match, and it is the one that I kind of, I told you from the future the result of already, so I don't know <laughs> uh, that it's that exciting, but it's interesting that it, that it keeps happening that way. If he doesn't die to Swarm Host, uh, it'd be a very different match. Yeah. That feeling, if it doesn't go future Jeff's way, that would be a bit unfortunate. Uh, I mean, and, and if that's the case, then it's like the, the intrigue and mystique of future Jeff is just like so interesting that we, you know, we got to go back to it. It goes on a yeah. whole of the timeline. Yeah. What did he mean yeah. when he said he won when he actually lost? Did he change did history he... by saying that future Jeff told him that it was going to be Oh, whoa, 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 all right. That's this, it. This needs a whole other movie, I think. Back <laughs> to the future. It's, it's back to the future all over again. Yeah. All right. Of course, you can get StarCraft on sale here uh, in the next week as it is on sale for all regions across the board. You can get that up until the 18th of September.
September. So if you haven't played the multiplayer, if you haven't played the campaign, I assure you, they're phenomenal. I they personally oh, love yeah. the campaigns. I love all the music. I love everything about it. So go out there. If you don't have StarCraft, go and grab that now. Great games. Pick it up. Do it. I, I, I like StarCraft. StarCraft's a good game. Yeah, it's pretty damn good. It's good. Pretty damn good. All right. We're going to go to a short break here for WCS Montreal. And when we return, more awesome StarCraft action here from WCS Montreal. <laughs> 